So payroll year end in Sage 50 payroll is just six steps to work through. But before I demonstrate these in the programme, I would like to give you a bit more of an idea of what each step is. So first one here is choosing the tax year, which this year is just going to be the 2024-25 tax year. So you're going to choose the tax year that you're ending. Next step there is the internet submission. So this is that final submission that we've been mentioning, and this does need to be submitted by that deadline of the 19th of April. It is an employer payment summary or an EPS, but it is different to the normal EPS, as I said, um, like if, that you would send if you were reclaiming statutory parental payments, for example. After this, step three is to produce your P60s. So these must be distributed to your employees by the 31st of May. And there are a few different ways that you can do these um, and produce these P60s in Sage 50 payroll. So I'll give you a bit more information on each of those options very shortly. After this, again, it's backing up your data. You will hear us say that a couple of times during the webinar, just because it is so important, um, hence why it has its own step. Then step five is to complete your end. So this is going to clear down the year to date values for the 24-25 tax year. It's also going to move your process date onto the 6th of April. So it's going to move you into that new tax year. And it's important to know that when I say the year to dates are cleared down, nothing is deleted. So the information is still in payroll but it's now last year's figures. And um, so they're going to be cleared down to make room for the new tax years, year to dates instead. And then last but not least is the step to distribute the year end returns. So this basically just brings up a window with a reminder of those deadlines that I mentioned a bit earlier. Um, and yeah, a little congratulations message to say that you've completed year end. So they're the six steps that I'm going to be demonstrating. But before we look at these in the programme, I just want to go back to the P60s and kind of talk about those different options. So I did mention there's a few different ways to produce them in Sage 50 payroll. First of all, you've got the option to upload the online P60s to Sage HR, very similar to how you would if you do the online pay slips. Or this would be online bureau if you're an accountant. So that go onto the online portal and each employee would be able to access them either online or on the mobile app. This does seem to be the most popular way that people are going to be producing the P60s this year. You could also email the P60s, similar to what you would if you already email the pay slips. Um, and if you do already email the pay slips, this is going to use the same configuration settings that you've got set up for that as well. And then other option there is to print the P60s onto plain paper. So no need for stationery anymore. Um, in fact, Sage and HMRC no longer provide stationery, so it would just be a case of printing them onto plain paper from the programme. Something else I want to mention, and you don't have to use the same option for all of your employees either. So let's say you didn't have everyone set up for the online services. Maybe you've got half of your employees set up. You could upload half of those employees P60s but then print or email for the rest. So you can kind of mix and match the way you do the P60s, depending on what's best for you and what suits you. So that is a bit of an outline of the steps to process payroll you and a little bit more on the P60s as well. I'll turn off my camera and it is now time to go for a demonstration of payroll your end. So as you can see, I have processed my last pay run of the tax year. Um, and my last updated and last FPS date is the 31st of March 2025. So this was my last pay run of the tax year as I run a monthly payroll. Now, first things first, when you're going to go and do a payroll year end, you do need to change your process date. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we're going to change this to the 5th of April 2025. So the last day of the tax year. So this is the date that we would recommend that you run all of the year end tasks on and produce the P60s as well, especially if you're running any year end reports, for example, too. Um, just kind of best practice to keep it on the 5th of April there. Now, you've got two options in terms of where you process year end. Um, but let's just go to the payroll year end section, first of all. And this is that kind of flow chart there, which I showed you on the slides. So it's like a process map there. So these are the six steps that you need to complete. I do think majority of people do it this way. But if you do want a different view of these steps, you can just click on this payroll your end option from the tasks on the left. This is going to kind of bring up a um, checklist of the steps instead. So it'll prompt you to complete the first step first of all. Then it'll bring up a checklist. 
um, and you can kind of basically tick off the steps as you go. So if you would prefer it that way and a bit more of a visual way of you know, viewing the steps, I would recommend using that option there. I am going to work from the flow chart today, um, so I'm just going to stick to this. That first step, as we've seen, is to choose the tax year that we're ending. Now, this does normally default to the last payroll year end that's been done. So like mine, yours might say 2324. That is totally fine. But we do need to change that. So we'll just click on this. We do get a message just asking if we want to include all of the employees who've been paid in the tax year. So I'll go ahead and click yes. And here is that window that comes up. So we can see it has defaulted to 2425. If that's wrong, you can just select it from the drop down. And again, the report date is correct, but you can change that just using the calendar if needed. So 5th of April 2025. The only other thing in here is the cessation date. So if the company has ceased trading, you can just type in or use the calendar there to pop in that date and then just click OK. And we can see a message there confirming that the tax year has been changed to 2024 slash 2025. So simple as that, that is step one done. Next step is the final submission. So I will just click on this. So it does look like a kind of normal employer payment summary there, but a couple of differences to be aware of. So I'll click continue. You'll check over your company details there and click submit. Now this submission doesn't include any employee or payment details as they were sent in the last FPS of the tax year. But what this mainly does is send an indicator to HMRC that it is the last submission of the tax year. So you can see final submission for the year, yes. So that's the kind of flag there. And something else that this summary window also shows, just to kind of make you aware, employment allowance and apprenticeship levy year to date are both kind of flagged there as NA. So this occurs whether or not you claim employment allowance or have apprenticeship levy liability totally normal you can just continue to send your year end submission um, with those both saying NA there and if you do want to apply for employment allowance in the new tax year uh, Duncan will kind of go over these steps a little bit later I'll go ahead and click submit and we'll wait for that to go across to HMRC a couple of people have asked as well if they do need to manually change anything to indicate that it's the final submission uh, but no you don't payroll does have this set up already you just need to submit it in this step from the payroll rent process and we can see that's been sent successfully and that is step two done next step producing the p60s just a reminder that that deadline for issuing these p60s is the 31st of may and whether you're printing emailing or uploading this is the button you'll click on so you've got all three options in here we will go to print our email first and we'll just select email from the drop down first of all. So this is going to email the P60s with the same configuration settings you've got for emailing pay slips. So if you email via Outlook, for example, or if the pay slips are password protected, so will the, P the P60s will be as well. Basically, any specific configuration settings will be the same. Or if I was printing, I would select print. I can select this box to preview the reports before printing and then I'm just going to go ahead and click print to load up that preview for you. Now because some of my employees are set up for online services or email it is asking if I want these employees to be included in the print option so essentially producing the P60s for them in two different ways. If you don't want these employees to have printed P60s you only want to upload or email theirs just click no and this will deselect them um, or you can still have everyone selected. So I'm just going to click yes, totally preference how you produce them. And as I said, you can produce them in more than one way for the employees. So this is the preview of the P60s and this will print exactly as they are here. Remember that is onto plain paper, so stationery is no longer needed. In the top left, you do have the options uh, to print, so you can print from here. Or if you wanted to export the P60s as well, maybe save them you know, as a PDF or something on your computer, you absolutely can as well. But we can see we've got them for all of the employees here too. So I'll just go back from this. So that was printing or emailing. The other option you've also got is uploading the P60s. So as I said, this is the most popular option um, for producing the P60s so far this year. 
and today we will be uploading the P60s to Sage HR. But as I said, if you're an accountant, this will be a slightly different process using the online bureau portal instead. So I've just clicked upload there and it's brought up this window. And we can see we've got five employees set up for the online services. Now something to note if you are using Sage HR, unlike the pay slips, where you can schedule a day for them to be published, P60s can only be uploaded immediately. If you do want them to go up on a certain day, feel free to complete all of the other steps of payroll your end, then simply come back to payroll another day, set your process date to the 5th of April 2025, and then you can come back to this step and produce the P60s from there. So I'll go ahead and click upload. Give that a second to upload them. And then once they have been, there will be a message to say that they've been successfully uploaded and you'll have the option to view them there. Perfect. So we can access the online services from there. Um, I'm actually already logged in. So I'll bring that up and just refresh the board there. And this is Sage HR. So this is where they're uploaded to. Now I'm actually logged in as the HR admin. So this is my account and I've kind of got access to all of the settings I and mean, all of the employees and things too. But the employees will only be able to see their own payslips and P60s. Now to view the P60s, I'm just going to go to the payslip section. We've got two tabs here. One of them's for P60s. And here I can see those ones for the 2024-25 tax year that I've just published there. So I've just uploaded these to my employees. So they will have got a notification to let them know that it's available. To view the P60 just for one employee, if I just wanted to check on one person, I could do this by going to company. And I could just click on someone's profile here. Go to payslips and P60s. And again, we've got that P60s tab there at the top. And that's that new P60 there, which I can view. Get a nice clear view of that there. So that's a P60. I can save that as a PDF from here. Or I've also got the option of downloading that too. So a couple of different options there. So if you do want to know more about the online services, specifically the pay slips and P60s, we do have a few upcoming sessions going over exactly this. And I will tell you a little bit more about the dates for those um, in the further support later on. But that's the online P60s. So they're produced now, they've been uploaded. So I'm just going to close this. What I can do now as well is tick this little box to say that we've produced the P60s. So we've completed that step and then click close. And that's that step done. So they're the biggest steps out of the way, to be honest. We're over halfway through payroll year end at this point. And next step would be to back up the data. This is just going to bring up, bring up the backup wizard for you. So I'll click next. Leave those default files highlighted there. That's going to back up everything that you need. And then I can browse to where I'd like it saved. So if I just call this like uh, payroll year end process 2425, something like that, just so I know exactly what that is. I can click save, next and finish. Wait for that backup to complete there. There we go, and I know that my data is now secure. So if, if I ever need to restore that backup, I know exactly you know, which one that is. Now, one of the last steps um, to complete payroll year end is to complete year end. So I'm just gonna click on this. Just a little reminder of those year to dates. So I'm gonna click yes to this. It is gonna clear those down. Little reminder there about tax codes and things too. And if you do have any employees um, who, who, you know, you need to update the mileage or anything like that, you can click yes. Um, otherwise, just click no. And we can see tax year end clearing completed. And just a reminder that that data has not been deleted as well. So this is basically saying that those year to date have become historical data and they've cleared down, as I mentioned earlier, ready for the new tax year's year to dates. Another thing this has done is move that process date onto the 6th of April 2025. So we're now in the new tax year. Last step, distribute your end returns. So we'll just click on this. This is basically just a little kind of reminder of those deadlines I mentioned. So distributing the P60s by the 31st of May and that final um, year end submission as well by the 19th of April, along with a congratulations message. Because as long as we've done all of these steps, um, we have now completed payroll year end. 
So I'll click close. So that is payroll your rent start to finish just those six steps in the program so as long as you've done all those preparation steps it is just a nice easy process of clicking through those steps and kind of working through them now before we do move on to getting ready for the new tax year i did mention that the employees can view their p60s on the mobile app too so i do have just a very short video of kind of how quickly they can access them if i just play that then so obviously i uploaded the p60s as soon as those P60s are uploaded, they are going to get a notification if they use the mobile app there, which they can click on. That's going to take them straight to the payslips and P60s. Similar to the online portal, they'll click the P60s tab, open that P60 there, and they can view it easily on their phone nice and quickly. And they do have some share options, which includes kind of downloading it um, or anything that you'll need to do there. So a nice, quick process for them.